Hey guys, welcome to the video. Um, today we're talking about the mechanism of cardinine's action, the, the cardinine's mechanism of action, and the benefits of cardinine. As you can see, this is a very in-depth document that I had one of my research assistants make for me. And so there's a little bit about the history of cardinine, but really what we're really going to be focusing on is the specific impact of cardinine on specific types of tissue, like skeletal muscles and um the cardiac muscle, the cardiac system in general, um, and how exactly it works, um, how cardinine impacts the body. And I hear a lot of people on YouTube and other places talking about cardinine, but nowhere that really talks about in detail, like in the body physiologically, exactly what cardinine does. So let's, let's do that a little bit. So let's get started. This right here is the chemical structure if you're interested in it. And I will be making this document available. I will link it in the description below. So check that out. If you want this document, it's available to you. Um, of course, I don't have to tell you all the different names of cardinine. Um, now, this is what's uh, probably interesting, that cardinine was uh, formulated way back in 1992 for reducing the levels of LDL, bad cholesterol, and increasing HDL, good cholesterol, in the body. Um, it was immediately adopted as a doping agent. It was then banned um, And basically, it's an exercise pill or active compounds that mimic the biochemical and functional effects of regular exercise, such so as oxidative fiber type transformation, mitochondrial biogenesis, improved fatty acid oxidation, angiogenesis, which is the creation of uh, new blood vessels throughout the body, and increased exercise capacity, which is closely related to mitochondrial biogenesis, right? Uh so mitochondrial biogenesis is one of the big uh, things, and that's probably what leads to everything else is improved fat, fatty acid oxidation and geogenesis. Um, and this this is also a big thing, oxidated fiber type transformation. Um, it's a type of fibers that exist in the muscles. Um, um, that's a big thing. Um, and this is the pathway right here. It, it is an agonist of the nuclear peroxisome proliferator activated receptor. There's actually a receptor on the nucleus of every cell in the body that the card cardinine acts on. And this receptor is, is referred to as this. Now, I'm not going to say the whole name of it, but this is the kind of the symbol for that receptor in particular that is on the nucleus of every cell of your body. And that's what GW acts on. It's an agonist. It activates that receptor and that causes a certain type of upregulation of gene transcription and translation of particular genes of your DNA. And this receptor regulates transcription of over 100 housekeeping genes, uh, which are engaged in the fundamental tissue metabolism. Um, we're getting to the details of all this, so bear with me if all this sounds a little general. And then this receptor is one of three PPAR isotypes and expresses in adipose tissue, liver, skin, brain, and skeletal muscle. So this receptor, which GW or cardinine is the is an agonist for, right, exists in the adipose tissue, liver, skin, brain, and skeletal muscle. So because it ex this receptor is on the nucleus of all these different uh, tissues, uh, it acts on all these. So the cardinine not only has beneficial effects on muscle and metabolism, but it's on, on your skin. Uh, it's good for your skin. It's good for your brain. It's good for your liver. It's good for your adipose tissue. Um, recent research demonstrated that uh, PPAR sigma regulates many different biological activities such as lipid and lipoprotein metabolism. So it, it actually upregulates, we'll look and it doesn't say it here, but it actually upregulates lipid, uh, lipid consumption and lipid metabolism and upregulates lipoprotein metabolism. Um, it upregulates mitochondrial respiration. So this like when you're young, when you start doing like endurance exercise, your body immediately responds and kicks up your mitochondria, start doing everything they need to mitochondrial respiration. But even by the time you're 30, 31, you start getting a little bit older 
it's more difficult if you haven't trained your body and made sure that your body knows how to do this and knows that it's going to need to do this by that time. It's kind of difficult to get your mitochondrial respiration to increase uh, more than what you're accustomed to. And so this can be a limiting factor in um, in adapting to exercise. But what cardenine does, it, it, it increases mitochondrial respiration. That means there's more fat that can potentially be uh, oxidized. There's more fat oxidation capacity in the mitochondria. Um, and so what happens is there's more me metabolites. Uh, there's more metabolites produced in a shorter amount of time. So just like, you know, there's metabolites produced from working out and building muscle or doing weight training, and the metabolites signal the upregulation of muscle tissue, the uh, the 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 uh, the the metabolites or the byproducts of mitochondrial respiration, um, up sorry about that actually upregulate, um the upregulate the, the mitochondrial capacity of the cell, meaning the number of mitochondria, the size of the mitochondria, and um, the number of the mitochondria. Excuse me, I'm going to plug in my computer really quickly. I have my plug right here, and I also have the outlet right here. So I will literally require about five more seconds to do that. Okay. Um, so now let's move on. Uh, it says cell skeletal reprogramming. Um, this is, it will increase the density, uh, density of the cells, but it will also, ch uh, density of the bones, but it will also, uh, like the distribution of density will, it can, it can affect that. Uh, thermo meaning like the, the the actual shape of your skeleton can be impacted and we're going to look at all this in detail this is kind of the overview part of the video and the part of the document and it increases thermogenesis of course thermogenesis an increased amount or a, a increased speed of thermogenesis in requires mitochondrial respiration basically thermogenesis is more energy uh, reactions going on which are exothermic and so there's more heat being produced in your body through mitochondrial respiration and that's what kind of thermogenesis is um, and but thermogenesis is kind of like sometimes the purpose of mitochondrial respiration like if it's really cold and you need to get warm so thermogenesis is kind of the purpose of mitochondrial respiration sometimes you know and this is what actually thermogenesis is what uses up your brown fat and that's the fat that you can actually lose at any given time and what happens is as you lose that brown fat more of your white fat turns into brown fat so this is really good for losing the brown fat that you can actually lose um, it, this is what it's kind of designed to do most effectively evolutionarily speaking um, then inflammation um, Karyocyte different keratinocyte differentiation and wound healing. So these are all things that are governed by the PPAR uh, 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 receptor on the nucleus of the tissue uh, nucleus of the cell of tissues that we highlighted up here somewhere. Uh, you know the the liver. You know there's all these different skeletal tissue. We saw that. I won't go back to it now. Here it's another. This is like a the PPR pathway. This is like a visual way of seeing it. There's recept this this receptor exists on in the artery, um, in the nucleus on the nucleus of cells in the artery in the liver microphages, uh, which are part of the anti-inflammatory system, adipose tissue, uh, muscle uh, in the muscle and in the heart. So. So in the heart, when this receptor is bonded to by cardinine or it, uh, it acts as an ag agonist, you see the cardinine coming into this, it increases fatty acid transportation and oxidation, uh, increases fatty acid transportation and oxidation, increases thermogenesis, uh, increases slow twitch fibers, uh, Increase, increases slow twitch, increases thermogenesis, increases fatty acid transportation and oxidation in the muscle. Uh, that's what it, how it acts in the muscle. In the adipose tissue, which is what most people are interested in with cardinine, is fat loss. So it does have an impact with fat loss. It says increase fatty acid transportation and oxidation. 
Um, so there's more lipolysis that happens, increased thermogenesis, because it is through incre when when PPAR is bonded to bicardinine, uh, there's increased fatty acid transport and oxidation within the adipose tissue. What that means is when fatty acid is oxidized uh, it, it, within the mitochondria of the adipose tissue, then it releases into the blood as glucose, and the glucose is what then's up took by other cells to be used. Increased thermogenesis, same thing, heat production. In the artery, it benefits by increased HDL cholesterol, uh, and then in the liver, increased pentophosphate shunt. Uh, I'm not really too sure about what that is. I don't know too much about it, but if you know what it is, this is useful information. I will then make a video. Like, obviously, I'm studying this stuff myself, so I know a lot about this. I don't know too much about this stuff yet, so I will make a separate video for this. Um, and the macrophages. Uh, binding, releasing, anyway, all that. So let's get into all the details now um, after we've done a good overview. Um, so this is another uh, kind of uh, graphic uh, that has to do with cardinine and its effects. I won't spend too much time on it because I actually want to get to the detail of each system, each type of tissue. Basically, it's saying that, you know, uh, that it increases endurance um, it decreases blood glucose, so cardinine will actually lower your blood sugar, um, increases uh, fat metabolism, uh, fatty acid metabolism, same thing, and gluconeogenesis. This is interesting, right? If you know what this is, gluconeogenesis is when the body breaks down the muscle and releases amino acids into the body and the amino acids are uh, translated into or are transformed into energy or glucose, gluco gluconeogenesis. This is what that is. It's actually making your muscle or um, other amino acids that are in the bloodstream into glucose. Uh, this is what is gluconeogenesis. So down regulating that is kind of down regulating muscle breakdown and also allows uh, free amino acids in the bloodstream that might be extra, not from the muscle to actually use for protein synthesis and not for gluconeogenesis because amino acids in the bloodstream will either be used for protein synthesis or gluconeogenesis once they get to the whatever tissue they're going to. So if you downregulate gluconeogenesis, then what's going to happen is they're either going to uh, go into protein synthesis or they will be eliminated by the kidney and your urine. Um, but you just need to... Um, uh, but so this is a good thing for that reason. Also fat browning. So it's been shown scientifically that cardinine will increase fat browning. So basically transforming white brown cells to brown fat cells, which is basically a difference is brown, fa brown fat cells look brown because they have more mitochondria in them. And white cells, white fat cells don't look brown because they don't have mitochondria in them. And basically they can't be used because they don't have mitochondria in them. So what this does, fat browning, what that does is it increases mitochondrial content in the white uh, white uh, fat cells that's basically what it does okay so in general exercise increased energy supply by promoting catabolism of protein glycolysis and gluconeogenesis from amino acids uh, so Again, by promoting catabolism of protein, this is the breakdown of your muscle tissue is the catabolism of protein, glycolysis, and the gluconeogenesis from amino acids. This is, again, once the muscle breaks down, then in the bloodstream, there's an abundance of amino acids and, and the body can use the amino acids to transform it into glucose, a substrate for glucose. While cardinine increased fatty acid oxidation through brand chain amino acids and ketone body pathways. So there's a contrast here, right? Uh, in between the impact of exercise on the body and the impact of cardinine. Car exercise will actually increase the catabolism of protein. Like this is endurance exercise they're talking about. But here, cardinine is, is better than exercise because it increased fatty acid oxidation, right? It's, uh, it's causing adipose tissue to be oxidized, uh, uh, through branch chain amino acid and ketone body pathways. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the enhanced endurance of organisms by GW cardinine is realized by net, net effects. Uh, this is a mistype. Net effects on 
And then now we're going into the specifics. Uh, Actually, I think this would be a really long video if I if I did it all together. And I think this is a good overview. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to just make this video as the mechanism of action um, and the benefits of cardinine overview. Um, but then I'm also going to do a, a video separately on the impact of a cardinine on all these separate body tissues. Um, and I think um, I'll do a separate video on that, on each one of these. Um, but I'll do them quickly, so if you're watching them, they should be up on my channel. Um, please, uh, please watch, please subscribe, please like if this was good content for you, and I will be talking to you soon. Bye.